Well, um, good evening during the day. We had a technical glitch with the video last night for, for the day six nightly dedication. So we're sitting here in front of Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital in St. Louis, where we just hung with um, a really great group of kids, parents, doctors, nurses, and child life workers. And uh, we're going to refilm the uh, day six nightly dedication. Uh, we arrived in St. Louis around 3 p.m. yesterday. Uh, it was incredible rolling up to the St. Louis Arch and, uh, and, and hitting this, this famous monument that sort of seems like a bizarre object, you know? Yeah. But I can tell you when you ride your bike there from Milwaukee, it's like it's finding, cool. it's like finding <laughs> water after you know, being in the desert or whatever. Yeah. Very epic. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, pretty epic. I guess that's the point of it, right? All right. Um, so we are making two dedications uh, this evening. Just pretend that there's no sunlight, okay? Just be with us. We have two very uh, important dedications tonight. Alex is going to uh, read read off uh, and state the facts about our friends. Um, so take it away. Our, uh, our first dedication is for Bella Quail, uh, Bella Jane Quail. Bella is uh, very special to the three of us because in the Pavlov in 2010, we all met her at Dornbecker's Hospital where she was, uh, she was on, I think, about day 80. Post, barrel, post uh, cord blood transplant. She was diagnosed with ALL on uh, August 4th, 2008, and then uh, she, she was in remission, and then she relapsed in May of 2010, and had a cord blood transplant on September 7th of 2010, just after or just before we met her. Um, sadly, she relapsed again in March of this year, and she passed away on July 10th of this year. So uh, Bella was a dynamite, dynamite kid. She was four when we met her. And uh, she was five when she passed, and she was amazing. We, uh, when we saw her in the hospital, when, when we met her at Dornbecker, we, uh, we had to wear, like, full gowns um, and, and gloves and masks. So um, Alex pointed out last night in the video that didn't work out that you know, she never even saw our faces. But there was a photographer with us um, documenting our visit that day, and she just loved the camera. She was really, uh, really into posing and, and playing with the photographer. Well, she took the camera right out of his hands. Though. That's true, yeah. <laughs> which is something we like. She turned it on us. Yeah, she's um, on top of it. Her mom was really remarkable. She was a single mom. She was like a punk rock um, fan, and she had like a lot of tattoos. And what was Slayer. Slayer. Slayer shoes. Slayer Vans. Yeah. I remember that. So it's like really, um, it was a powerful day for the three of us. It was the second hospital we visited together, but really the first because Seattle Children's is like your home base. So this was right. the first one that was new to all of us. And uh, we're remembering her uh, this evening. And, and so our second friend is is, uh, is another friend of Alex's. Yeah, so um, Raymond Butler, uh, when Owen was in the Seattle Children's, we were visiting some friends there, and Rima came in to the room. Uh, she was being admitted, uh, and uh, she was an amazing uh, girl. That when we met her, she and Owen bonded and talked a little bit, and uh, she showed off her wig and her dress that she had worn to her prom that the Starlight uh, Foundation had put on. Uh, she was 12 years old when she was diagnosed in January of 2009 with a rare rare cancer called desmoplastic small round cell tumor. And she was really inspiring and really energetic. She absolutely lived life on her terms. Um, and uh, she was a real inspiration to Owen. And she uh, actually even started her own foundation. Uh, sadly, she passed away shortly after we met her on uh, June 6th of 2011. But she's been, uh, she was and remains an inspiration to us. And like uh, Megan, you know, for Bella, uh, Kristen is a, also a single mom and uh, a real, a really powerful person. And, uh, you know, I just, I just want to honor her. This is what we do. We're three different cancer dads. Um, John's son Brock is is uh, off treatment. He is NED. There's no evidence of disease left in his body, which is the best thing we could ever hear. And on the other side of um, of me is Alex, whose son Owen is is currently going through treatment. In fact, he's taking chemo every night um, on while he and and and, and the family are out on Pablo across America. And I'm in the middle, um, 
as the dad who's uh, lost his son. And we're all here uh, sitting literally shoulder to shoulder, um, riding our bikes and going into every hospital we, we can get into to spread the word and to, to, to give people whatever glimmer of hope uh, we, can, we can bring into their room with a bike, with some stickers, with some postcards, with our stories from the road. And, uh, you know, the fact is we just got out of a hospital and uh, we can tell you that the Pablo message is being heard loud and clear by parents uh, and the kids who are old enough to understand the significance of, of what we're doing. It's really something. Every time we go to a hospital, it's like, it's just, it's fueling our tanks. So pretend it's dark. We're saying good night. And uh, we're going to wish Alex um, a safe trip back home. He and his family are about to jump on a plane and head back to Seattle, and John and I are going to get back on the bikes tomorrow and head back to New Orleans. Good night. Good night.